EMDP or the standard course? Which one should you choose? In this video we'll talk about the pros and cons of the EMDP and the pros and cons of the standard course and which one is right for which type of person and which one you should choose. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me, my name is Clark Keith and I'm a second year medical student studying at King's College London. I'll briefly describe what the EMDP is because I've already made a video on it. If you haven't already watched that video, please check it out. So briefly speaking, the EMDP is known as the Extended Medical Degree Programme. The main difference between the EMDP and the standard course that you have in King's College is that the EMDP has an extra year compared to the standard course. That extra year is because the first year that you would have in standard course in the EMDP, that is split into two years. So that essentially means that the content that you do in first year that you would have done in the standard course in the EMDP, that's split into two different years. So you do one half in one year and one half in the other year. In my video about the EMDP that I made already, I basically covered the course structure, the eligibility and the requirements for it. So please do check that out. So let's get started with the EMDP benefits. I want to make this video as quick as possible so I'm just going to quick fire all the benefits and all the cons for each the EMDP and the standard course. So with the EMDP you've got less grade requirements and that's not just grade requirements that's also the um, UCAT score that's lower as well. So basically in the EMDP they look for ABB whereas in the standard course they look for A star AA. The UCAT like I said is also different for EMDP they look for a UCAT score about 2400 and in the standard course they look for a UCAT score of probably about 2,800 or higher. You can get into the standard course with a lower UCAT score, but roughly to stand a chance, really you'd, you need to have a score of about 2,700, 800, higher than that. You also have more time to transition to the university workload or the medicine workload as well. Since the workload of the first year is half, that means you kind of get more time to pursue the extracurriculars, have more social time, have more time to join other societies and other opportunities for that as well. You also still mix with the standard course of your respective year, so when, whether that's 1A or 1B, you still get to mix with them in lots of different teaching. With EMDP as well, you also get more preparation time for placement. That could be helpful as well because you get more time to equip yourself with the skills that you need. In terms of the more preparation time, that basically is you get two years until you start placement, the third year is when you start for EMDP. For standard course, you get one year where you don't have any placement yet, and then the second year is when you start placement. In those years before you start placement, you do have clinical skills, so you get to work on those skills that you need, that you'll be expected to do when you do start placement. It can be good with EMDP where you get to know the standard course of 1A. Um, they'll be in the year above you once you start 1B. And like I said, you also get to know the standard course of 1B and you're with them for the rest of your degree. So you kind of get to know two kind of groups of years. Something else that is also exclusive to EMDP as well is that you get PBL sessions. PBL stands for problem-based learning and it's basically where you get a small group of students and you get a tutor as well and together you go through a clinical case and as you do that you come up with several learning objectives. The students then work together to try and cover those objectives and then present them to the group after. It's kind of used to understand key concepts together but in a smaller working environment where you can work with your peers with less people around and it also means you get to hone in on your presentation skills as well. You also get an EMDP tutor as well so you get more support in that way. Now let's move on to the EMDP cons. So like I said, although there are lower grade requirements, there are way fewer places in the EMDP. And those are usually prioritized with those with widening participation backgrounds. The course is an extra year longer, so the EMDP is six years, which is seven if you intercalate, whereas the standard course is five years, six if you intercalate. Although you get to know two standard year cohorts, the main cohort that you'll be with for the rest of your degree will be the standard cohort that you meet in 1B. So if you make a lot of friends with the standard course in 1A, you might not see them as much as you do in 1B. You will still see them, but maybe not as much. Lastly, if you're a big fan of early clinical exposure, EMDP might not be the best for you because you start placement in your third year. This is in comparison to standard course where you start your placement in your second year. Alright, and now let's go to the standard course benefits. So with the standard course, it is five years, like I said, six if you intercalate. You also stick with one cohort for the rest of your degree as well. Your placement becomes sooner, so you start it in your second year. That's earlier clinical exposure compared to EMDP. In terms of the standard course cons now, you have higher grade requirements and that is also the UCAT score as well. If you want to watch a video about the entry requirements and stuff like that, 
and the EMDP is still really good to use. It also compares to standard course. So if you want to apply to the standard course, you can use that video as well. The UCAT they would look at is probably about yeah, 2,700, 800 or higher. You also have less time to transition and get used to the workload. So that means right from the get-go, you basically have a bucket load of lectures on top of you. And lastly, you also don't get PBL sessions. You do get something called CBL as a default instead. And CBL basically stands for case-based learning. It's basically in a wider, way bigger group. However, the EMDP also has this as well. So with the EMDP, you do the CBL as you would normally with the standard course, whilst also doing PBL every like probably twice a month or once a month, or I think it's twice a term actually. So which one do I choose then, EMDP or the standard course? So I've put a list together to see what kind of person would fit which course. So I'd go for EMDP if you feel like A star IA is a bit too risky to attain, if you feel like it's unlikely that you'll get a 2700 plus UCAT score, if you don't mind the extra year that comes with EMDP, if you prefer to have less workload in your first few years, if you want more time to commit to extracurriculars, to have more social time or more opportunities to join societies, if you prefer to have more time to transition to the workload, if you don't mind the extra year before placement as well, and you're a really big fan of the PBL. I'd go for the standard course if you feel like A star AA isn't risky for you, if you feel like a 2700 plus UCAT score is attainable, if you want a shorter course being one year less, if you don't mind the heavier workload that comes with the first year of standard course with it all being packed into one year and less time to transition to it, if you don't mind that transition from the A-level workload to the university workload, if you're more of a fan of earlier clinical exposure and you want placement sooner being in your second year, and lastly if you don't mind having PBL and you don't mind having CBL on its own. So the final comment and the conclusion, both are still very competitive courses to get into, the EMDP has quite a few places although it having a lower grade requirement and UCAT uh, score requirement. Standard course does have way more places relative to EMDP, although there is a higher grade requirement and UCAT score requirement. EMDP though is still a good option. I would personally say EMDP is really good for backup. You can even apply to King's standard course and EMDP. So you can use it as a backup option if you want to apply for other medical schools. In my opinion, I think it's really good to use as a backup medical option. So anyways, thanks for watching. I really hope that helped. Please watch that video on the EMDP that I made before. I also made a video about interviews as well. I really hope that helped. Please like the video if it did help. Comment below if you think um, I missed anything or if there's any questions that you have. My Instagram is also here if you want to check that out. Please feel free to ask any questions on there as well. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.